Hey guys, what's going on? I am Tim Burzens from Amplified Metabolism, and in this video, I really wanna talk about the gut microbiome. Now, the microbiome is all of the bacteria that live in your large intestine. So we obviously know when we eat, chew it in the mouth, swallow it through the esophagus, ends up in the stomach, mixes with stomach acid and bile acids, moves into the small intestine where it is absorbed, and then into the large intestine for the final process where the bacteria sweep up whatever food has made it through and then you obviously excrete it. So when we're looking at the large intestine and the bacteria that live there, there's actually been a lot of research recently looking into how these bacteria have effect on your health. So it's actually been claimed that there is more or the equivalent number of bacteria in the human body as there are human cells. So clearly there, the bacteria is very important. It's having some sort of effect that's really having influence on our health. And there's even something called the gut-brain connection, which is the connection of neurons between what's happening in your gut and what's happening in your brain. The gut also produces the majority, 90% of the serotonin in your body, and serotonin is a neurotransmitter that has important effects in the brain as well. And so when we start to piece all these things together, we start to see that that large intestine is very important and the bacteria is creating a symbiotic relationship with your body. It's almost as if this separate entity of organisms is a part of your human body and that it's actually interacting with your body evolutionarily based on survival mechanisms and growth mechanisms and all that other good stuff. So to start this off, I really wanna dive into this kind of funny, a little bit comical story um, about that I read one day about this guy who had a roommate who was not the most intelligent of people. And this guy decided uh, that he wanted to basically infect his large intestine with yeast, specifically brewer's yeast, so that he would naturally produce alcohol and be drunk all the time. Obviously, there's a lot of people who actually have this syndrome called auto brewer's syndrome, and it's not a walk in the park. It's not a healthy thing at all, and it's definitely not something you would want to intentionally do. Anyway, for some reason, this guy thought it was a good idea. So he did an enema of brewer's yeast and basically got the yeast all up in his large intestine, had them colonize, and then whenever he would eat any kind of carbohydrate, it would get fermented. Whatever didn't get digested and absorbed into his body would get fermented by those yeast, the alcohol producing, ethanol producing bacteria in his large intestine, produce alcohol, get absorbed into his bloodstream. So then obviously anytime he eats, he's getting drunk, he's having bad hangovers, headaches, he's having brain fog, poor sleep, literally his entire system getting screwed up because now every time he's eating, alcohol is being leaked into his bloodstream. Now, uh, I don't know this specific person, how he healed himself from it, um, I'll give some recommendations for anyone who maybe does have auto brewer syndrome who wants to uh, heal it. But I think there's something a little more important to look at here for all of us. And that is that something in the large intestine was digesting the undigested food, specifically the carbohydrates, that was leaking in a certain chemical into the body or a certain nutrient into the body that was having such a strong and profound effect on the entire physiology of the organism. Now, alcohol is a very obvious uh, nutrient. If you're eating, if you're drinking alcohol, you feel the effects. It, it changes your perception, uh, it, it decreases your inhibition, and obviously leads to dehydration and mineral loss and um, you know, hangover, a headache, and all that stuff. So it's very obvious that I'm eating this food and then having this very overt effect in my system. But the important part for all of us is to recognize we have the same thing happening every time we eat. It's just not as strong and as apparent as alcohol. So for example, if you have too many lactic acid producing bacteria in your large intestine, then it's almost as if your large intestine is over colonized or infected with these lactic acid producing bacteria. And now whenever you are eating carbohydrates, they, the ones that don't get digested make it to your large intestine and the bacteria produce lactic acid. So now lactic acid is leaking into your bloodstream. Now, what does that mean? What is, what is lactic acid? Lactic acid is the byproduct from the inefficient glycolytic stress metabolism. So whenever you're in the gym and you're lifting a weight for high reps, your muscle switches into that glycolytic metabolism to produce this quick, fast, inefficient energy because it needs it to overcome the stress of lifting that weight. 
So you get that burn in your muscle. So essentially, and, and in order to get rid of the lactic acid, the muscle leaks it out into the bloodstream, takes it to the liver where the liver handles it and processes it and all that good stuff. Now, if you have too many of these lactic acid producing bacteria in your large intestine, now anytime you're eating a high carbohydrate meal, some of it's getting down there and producing lactic acid that's now leaking its way into your bloodstream. That means that anytime you have a high carbohydrate meal, it's gonna feel the same as after an intense workout where you fatigued your body and dumped lactic acid into your bloodstream. Now, that's pretty interesting if you think about that because a lot of people say they don't have good carbohydrate sensitivity and you know maybe they don't have good insulin sensitivity so the carbohydrates that they do absorb aren't getting into the cells and it's raising their blood sugar. Well, if the bacteria are producing lactic acid every single time they're, producing, they're eating carbohydrate, well, now that lactic acid is also decreasing the insulin sensitivity. And now we have this ongoing cycle where blood sugar gets all out of balance because there's too many of these gut bacteria producing these chemicals that are being leaked into the bloodstream. Now let's take it on another side and let's use something that where a bacteria is having a positive effect. So a lot of these bacteria have been found to produce the short chain fatty acids. So obviously a fatty acid has varying lengths, short, medium, and long. Most of the long uh, chain fatty acids are what we usually think of when we think of fat, but certain fats like butter and coconut oil have medium chain fatty acids or medium chain triglycerides, which have gotten a lot of uh, benefit uh, in seen in the studies where it'll actually improve your liver, liver function and it's a short, quick energy that is immediately absorbed into the cells. It doesn't need insulin or it doesn't need any other kind of uh, hormone in order to absorb it. And it's had a lot of positive health benefits. And even shorter than the medium chain is the short chain triglycerides like butyric acid and propanoic acid. So these short chain fatty acids also have a lot of benefits for your body. And they're also a very quick fuel that can help increase your metabolism and your body heat and get your cells functioning in a proper way. Now, whenever you eat something like coconut oil or butter, the long chain fatty acids are absorbed into the bloodstream by digestion of the bile salts but the medium chain triglycerides get absorbed via the portal vein, which is directly connected to the liver. So they don't actually get leaked straight into the bloodstream. Instead, they go into the liver for processing and they never actually make it to the bloodstream to have those systemic effects. So coconut oil and butter, great for the liver because they have these protective uh, benefits. And a lot of studies have actually shown that those saturated medium chain triglycerides can protect against fatty liver disease, even when alcohol consumption or uh, fruit consu or sugar consumption is very high. Um, that's another topic for another video, obviously. So if you are eating carbohydrates and especially fiber, which uh, fermentable fiber, like soluble fibers uh, that are getting fermented by these bacteria in your large intestine, and those bacteria are the good kind that are producing these short chain fatty acids that have all these health benefits. Well, now those fatty acids are getting leaked straight into your bloodstream, not into the liver where it has to get processed, but into the bloodstream. So now it's going to have this systemic effect. And those short chain fatty acids are going to be used by all of your different cells. And it's going to ramp up the hormone production because it's changing the systemic levels. So now we have three different examples here. We have the alcohol producing bacteria that are getting you drunk every time you eat carbohydrates, the lactic acid bacteria that are making you feel fatigued like you just had a hard workout after every time you eat carbohydrates. And then we have the short chain fatty acid producing bacteria that are actually improving your health, improving your insulin sensitivity, improving your energy utilization every time you have carbohydrate. And so it becomes very obvious that the health of the bacterial system of your microbiome system that's happening in the large intestine has such a massive and profound effect on your overall health in so many different ways. And so there are a lot of different ways to improve your gut balance, the microbiome balance, which is really what we want because we don't want all of one bacteria and none of another bacteria. We want a blend of all the natural bacteria that are found in the large intestine in the right proportions to match the environmental and situational needs that the body is uh, exposed to, that the body needs in order to cope and thrive and survive. So there's many different ways we can approach this. Um, you know, eating fiber has an effect, the prebiotics, eating probiotics, which are actually the bacteria themselves, has an effect. Your ability to digest different foods 
uh, exposes your large intestine to a different type of nutrients based on what gets absorbed and what makes it to the large intestine. And then there's even the uh, fact that the gut and the brain are connected. So there's not just the efferent nerves which are sending the signal from your gut up to your brain, but there are the afferent nerves that are sending the signal from the brain down to your gut. So your actual the signal that your brain is sending is also influencing the way that your uh, gut bacteria are growing. And so there's a lot of these different ways and we're gonna be diving into all of those topics this entire week. So I just wanted to film this quick introductory video to kind of get you thinking about how the gut microbiome has such an important influence on not only your health, but even your day-to-day -day health and your individual uh, digestion of a meal and how it makes you feel afterwards. So if you like this video, subscribe. We're gonna be continuing this series for the rest of this week, talking about gut health, talking about how to improve your microbiome balance, reduce your lactic acid and endotoxin load, increase those short chain fatty acids. And this obviously has ties into liver health, to insulin sensitivity, to fat loss. So uh, we're gonna be covering all of these topics in great detail. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I hope you guys wanna come with me. Please subscribe if you like it. Like this video if you enjoyed it and leave comments if you have any questions. Um, and be sure to share it with anyone who you think might be benefit from this information. I also have a Patreon account in the about section of this video. You can click that link and head over there to subscribe if you would like to add a little tip and th say thank you for this video. And so I look forward to talking to you guys for the rest of this week. I hope you have a good one. Peace.